we're now going to give the ability for our users to have different permissions. And this is going to involve also creating a root which is protected for admins only. Now you can go ahead and expand this later on to include different permissions, but all I'm going to do for this video is have the ability to toggle a user uh, between admin and not admin. So the first thing that we should probably do is focus on just the database table that we're going to be storing these permissions in. We're going to be creating a new table for this and we're going to be creating a relationship between our users table and our users permissions table. So before we get started with this, you're going to want to remove all users from your application and go ahead and create this new table. So the table name is users underscore permissions. And in here, we're obviously going to have an ID. Uh, it's an integer, unsigned primary key and auto increment. We're going to have the user ID that this is attached to, and that's an integer as well. We're going to have is admin, which is going to be a Boolean. And essentially what this means is every time you want to create a new permission, you just create something with is underscore moderator, uh, can underscore host, anything like that. You'll just be able to dynamically check this within your application. So for the dates then, because we're going to be using another eloquent model, we need a created at date, which is a timestamp, and we also need an updated at date, which is a timestamp. So the user ID, we don't want to allow null and is admin. We don't want to allow null. This is either going to be a zero or a one. So we have our users permissions table. What we do need to do now is establish a link between our uh, user model. So if we just close all of this off and open up our user model here, we want to establish a link between our user model and our user permission model. Now we don't have a user permission model created at the moment, so let's do this. We're going to create a new file just in here. This is going to be called user permission. Notice how I'm using a singular version of each one. So instead of users permissions, I'm using user permission. That's just a standard. And in here, we're just going to create the model for this. So we're going to namespace it under code course user. We're going to create the class user permission. And we're going to extend eloquent. Now we need to uh, copy this namespace here because we're doing exactly the same thing. We're creating an eloquent model. And inside of here, we need to define the table name. So much like we did in the users table here, we had protected table equals users. We do the same thing in here. But this time it's users underscore permissions. And what we also want to do is set uh, what's fillable. So protected fillable and we have an array of fillable fields in here or columns in this case just is admin is going to be fillable and we also want to define the default values for when a user registers now all this is is a static property which allows us to say do we want a user when they register to be an admin well we can say no do we want them to have permission to host a topic to a forum we might create well we might say yes so in this case we're just going to say public static defaults and that's going to be an array of all of the properties we want to set so is admin is going to be false that's the only one that we're creating in this video but you can add more here depending on the columns that you have in your database so we have our user permission model set up we now need to relate our user model to our users permissions model so to do this all we need to do is create a relationship between the two and this is all within Laravel's database component. So this is how this works. It's nothing that we've built ourselves. So we're going to have a function called permissions or a method called permissions. And what we're going to do here is return uh, the type of relationship that this has. So a user has one set of permissions. So what we do is we return this has one, and then we give the name of the model that it has one of, of that this user has one of. So it has one set of permissions. It doesn't have multiple records to one user. It's just one row to one user. So we just give the full namespace to that class. So in here we write code course, user, user permission. And that is it. We need to, I guess, also tell 
which the foreign key is. So in this case, it's user ID. So we have a user here. The user's ID relates to this user ID. And that's it. So we now have permissions. So what we now need to do is update our registration route to be able to add a permissions record when an account is created. So let's open up root auth register. And down here, after we've created the user, we want to create a permissions record and we want to fill it with the default values. So to do this, all we do is we say user permissions. That's the method we've just created. We want to create a record. And in here, we'd normally create an array with something like is admin, blah, blah, blah. But we're not going to do that because remember, we've conveniently stored the defaults in this user permission model. So all we need to do here is say user permission defaults. And because it's a static method, we use the scope resolution operator here, or a static property rather. So user permission is namespaced. So we need to up here say use code course user user permission. And that is it. We've now created a record when we register a user that contains all of their permissions. So let's register a user and see what happens. Give a username, our password is normal. And hit register. Okay, so we've got an error. Let's see. Oh, call to undefined method permission. Uh, so let's just go ahead and check this out. Um, permissions, that should be. So let's start again. Let's go ahead and delete this record. Uh, we'll go ahead and enter this again. And we'll register. And there we go. So we've been registered. So we now have that user record, but we also have a user permissions record here. The user ID is 24. That matches this user. That's automatically done for us because it's a relationship. So it will automatically fill that field in for us. And we have is admin set to zero. But we're not actually using the permissions at all yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a has permission method on our user model, which is going to be a convenient way to check if a user has a certain permission. Then what we're going to do is add a filter and uh, basically disallow access to a certain route if a user isn't an admin, much like we did with the authenticated and guest routes filters. So first thing to do then is to add this has permission method on the user model. So all we do is we say has permission. And inside of this, what we want to do is take the name of the permission we're checking against. So we're just going to say permission like that. And we're going to return this permissions. And then we're going to access the key permission. So all this is doing is if we say has permission and then we pass in a string is admin, it's going to look under the user's permissions records in here and it's going to pull out that permission key. And what it's going to do then is it's going to return true or false. So we're going to cast this to a Boolean just to make sure. So that's how we check for permissions. What we can also do is add convenient helper methods to uh, be able to check permissions. So rather than saying user has permission is admin every time, we're going to say is admin as a method, and we're going to return this has permission is admin. Makes it a lot easier. So now all we need to do is check if it, if it, to check if a user is an admin is say user is admin using this method. That will hit user permissions. It will check the user's permissions. It will return true or false. Cool. So now what we're going to do then is create a route for admins only. So let's open up our views and let's open up our navigation. So if a user is signed in, we're going to have a link here, which is going to be an admin area. And here, let's define a URL for admin.example, for, for an example. 
So let's create the roots for this. So under roots, we're going to create a new folder called admin. I'm going to create a new file called example.php. This can be, uh, you can have many admin roots and you can protect them all. Obviously, we're not protecting against them just yet. So we're going to say app get forward slash admin forward slash example. All the usual stuff, use our app. And here we're just going to render a view. But first, let's give this a name. So it's admin.example as we gave in the URL for. Let's just echo out admin for now. And we need to add this to our roots file. So let's do this now. So roots admin example.php. And now we log in. Let's just uh, go ahead and activate our account first of all. There we go. Let's log in. Okay, so we're now signed in. We see this admin area. We can click through and see admin. But let's create a view for this as well. So under views, create a new folder called admin. And we'll create a new file called example.php. Copy over the base from home. Paste that in. We'll just say admin example and admin example. And then under our root, let's render out that view. There we go. So easy as that, we already know how to create roots, but we now have an admin example area. And the only problem is that any user can access this root. We need to give the ability to check. And to do that, we're going to have an admin middleware filter. So we're going to get rid of this for now. We'll create it first and then we'll attach it. So let's open up filters. And much like we did with authenticated and guest, we're going to do the same thing, uh, but for checking if a user is an admin. So let's create this down here. We're going to say admin equals function. And we want to use app. And in here, we're going to return a function like we did before. We're going to use app within that. And this is just how we define uh, middleware in this case. And what we're going to do here is we're going to check if not app auth or not app auth and then we use that helper method that we create in our user model is admin so if the user is not signed in or they're not an admin we're going to say app redirect app url for home so just to recap we are we've created a uh, some middleware which we can use as a filter we are checking if the user is not signed in or not an admin and if they're not signed in or they're not an admin we're redirecting them back to home so we have this we can now apply it if we just close off some of these examples to here so admin like so and if I just check my database table we're not an admin at the moment so when I access this admin area we just are returned home however if I change this from zero to one I can now access that admin area. So last of all, what we're going to do is check that uh, this uh, that the user is an admin before we display this link. And then what we're going to, going to do is in the all users section, we're going to output here whether the user is an admin or not. So to get rid of this link here, it's uh, extremely straightforward. All we want to do is wrap this link in an if statement here. So we're going to say if auth dot is admin and we're going to indent that and that is it so we need to check if they are an admin they are an admin at the moment but if we turn this off then that link goes so now for all users let's uh, add a little signifier to say if the user is an admin or not so under the views and user all we are going to here check if the user is an admin 
if user is admin. So you can see the convenience of using models. We can just define whatever we want and uh, reuse it all over the place. It's much easier than uh, checking you know, loads of code in one place. We're going to say admin in brackets. So now we can return here and refresh. We know we're not an admin, but if we do make ourselves an admin and refresh, we see admin just next to that username. So that is how permissions work. If you want to create more permissions, all you need to do is update your table. So we, for example, uh, can post topic. That's going to be a Boolean again. So you can use this to output whether you can post a topic. So you could do that anywhere. So for example, on your navigation, well, we'll just do this down here as an example, but we'll say, if user has permission, can post topic. And if user can post topic, and you can just write sort of normal PHP code within your roots as well to check this. So you can see here, nothing appears. When we change this to can post topic one, uh, it's not, a, oh, it's auth dot has permission. Let me see user can post topic. And when we turn that off, we see this. And just so we are 100% clear, for example, if you wanted to do this within your roots, so we'll just do this in our admin example root, we could say if app auth has permission, can post topic, echo user can post topic. So we'll make sure we're an admin and we can post a topic. We'll go over to the admin area and user can post topics just being out up there. Obviously you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to uh, do this in your view really, but you can uh, execute a specific set of code if the user can do something. And there we go. That is pretty much it. We have uh, created a user permissions table where we can define multiple permissions. For now, we've just done is admin. We've created a filter for that so we can protect against our uh, admin root. And you can do that with any other admin roots as well. And that's pretty much it. We can expand on this and add more permissions if you want, if we want.